be informed and stay up to date with what your elected representatives are doing on your behalf with the State House Report. Good afternoon. I'm State Representative Jerry Govan, representing Orangeburg House District 95 in the South Carolina General Assembly, which uh, I've served since 1993. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today and uh, to welcome you in terms of and share with you some of the things uh, that we're doing in the South Carolina General Assembly. Uh, first and foremost, it's a privilege and honor to serve the people that I do because I believe that as members of the South Carolina General Assembly, it is a privilege to serve as a, and an honor to serve as opposed to a right. And certainly we appreciate the voters having the confidence of sending me back to serve them in this particular capacity. A little bit about me, I'm a husband, a father, a grandfather, very proud grandparent. I'm a retired educator and also business consultant. Currently, uh, I operate a, uh, an insurance and consulting firm, the Govan Agency, uh, right here in the state of South Carolina to service those needs. And it's probably one of those reasons that I've been so much involved in key issues involving minority businesses as well in this state and promoting uh, that particular concept. I'm a former director of the South Carolina Small Business Development Center at South Carolina State University. I've worked in state government with the Department of Environmental Control. I've also served, uh, having spent two years in, in the U.S. Marine Corps, and uh, am a 1980 graduate of Officer Candidate School of the United States Marine Corps. Legislative priorities, uh, I've got to say, has been the top priority to me is education, because education still makes a difference for us in the state and across this nation in providing us with an opportunity a ladder of which we can climb to unfathomable heights. Those things that I've been involved in uh, as an educator, uh, I'm a former county attendant supervisor and have served in multiple capacities at the uh, district level, working with parenting and after school programs, and also have served uh, working with pretrial intervention. What this has exposed me to is the fact that it's important that we reach at risk populations because I was one of those at risk students growing up in Orangeburg and thankful you know, uh, to a great God, a strong mother and a strong father uh, was able to uh, move from there to where we are today. I think it's important that when we talk about education that every child in the state should be have access to a high quality education. That's why over recent years that I've continuously uh, uh, offered up a bill, uh, which is now judiciary, that will make it a constitutional mandate that every child be guaranteed a high quality education in the state of South Carolina. We're trying to get that moved uh, to a referendum so you, the voters, can have an opportunity to have your say. Prayerful and hopeful that uh, this year will be the year uh, that the House Judiciary Committee moves that bill uh, along. I've co-sponsored along with Representative Wendell Gilliard hate crimes legislation during my tenure as chairman of the Legislative Black Caucus has become a priority. And we've also looked at reform of law enforcement and looked at the practices of law enforcement. Thankful for the hard work of people like Representative uh, Rosalind Henderson Miles, who's done a great work in that area for the caucus chairing that committee that I appointed. Also in terms of housing, uh, we've introduced legislation uh, dealing with home attainability because in order to build a financial or wealth base, home ownership is one of the key ways in which we do that. And so we work very hard with that. Marvin Pendarvis was the chairman of, of that particular committee for me when I was uh, chairman of the Legislative Black Caucus. Financial literacy is another piece of legislation that we've introduced. Uh, we have a bill that's pending in the House Education and Public Works Committee. I understand the Senate has expanded upon the original bill that I uh, got passed and signed into law back in 2005, which would require financial literacy be taught as part of curriculum and standards in the state of South Carolina, K through on up to 12th grade. That bill was passed in 2005, and I understand the Senate now is also coming back and making pieces of that mandatory or strengthening that piece of legislation. Uh, we also have another bill in the House uh, that we're trying to move out of the education committee that would also buy, provide even stronger guidance because we need to know or help our students learn and know uh, about this issue of financial literacy. 
which is essential if they're going to be able to effectively navigate the challenges uh, of this new global society. A um, couple of other pieces of legislation I'll mention very quickly. It's important that we keep our kids in school. That's why we've sponsored and support, supported strongly uh, this whole concept of compulsory school attendance uh, to the age of 18. Some people may question that, but if we can't find our kids, we can't allow our kids to continuously drop out of school. Drop out of prevention is, is essential. And so we need to keep them in school and engaged. And at least if they're going to move on beyond that after they reach the age of emancipation, then at least they need to be able to move into an area and have some kind of skill. So we work very hard in that area. We've engaged this year also in terms of a study committee to look at our boards and commissions. It's a travesty in the state of South Carolina when we do not have adequate representation on the boards and commissions of our state that basically run these agencies that impact our lives from the time we're born to the time we die. This ranges from agencies such as the Department of Health and Environmental Control to our college boards uh, and commissions uh, that run the institutions of our state. And so we need to have an, a diverse culture uh, put in place, diverse representation, uh, which represents all South Carolina to ensure that those boards and commissions uh, operate in an efficient and effective manner. But more importantly, the agencies that they regulate and entities that they regulate and oversee that they provide all South Carolinians with opportunity. Legislative accomplishments, I'm very proud to say that we authored the reauthorization, uh, First Steps, which is our primary uh, entity that deals with birth to early learning uh, in the state of South Carolina. Uh, and of course, we need to build upon that. Again, we passed the state's first financial literacy law in 2005, and upon our initial arrival here in the South Carolina General Assembly, uh, we were responsible for the creation of the Department of Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Services, which is known as DOTIS, uh, because of our strong feeling that we needed to address and make a top priority substance abuse issues that ravage our state. And today we see the importance of that as, as our folk deal with issues not only in terms of addiction to drugs such as uh, crack, and cocaine, but also in dealing with other addictive drugs such as methane and also prescription meds that we see uh, that's a growing challenge with as well. Finally, uh, I like to uh, share in terms of looking forward as to where I'd like to see this state go. Uh, I believe that it's imperative. There are key issues uh, that we're dealing with uh, that impact all South Carolinians, regardless of whether they are black, white, or uh, all walks of life. I think it's imperative we get to the point in which we recognize that a rising tide lifts all boats. And as long as we're divided as a people, uh, just as we've seen what happened in the Capitol, how divisive the nation is right now, that there has to be a gravitation towards the center. If we can't talk to each other, we will never be able to move forward. So my hope is, and uh, through the whatever time that I have left in this General Assembly in this body, based on the blessings of the support of the voters, uh, that I can commit uh, myself to that cause in terms of bringing people together in which we can find common ground. Thank you so much for letting, allowing me to uh, be a public servant, and uh, I pray God's blessings be upon you. Thank you.